Hello and welcome to Jumping Spiders in, in Super Close Up. My name is Stuart Wood. So first of all, I would like to thank Laura for having me back for another live stream. I absolutely love doing these live streams. I really do like doing them. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for a few minutes for people to come into the room and uh, see if there are any pre-questions before we get going so let me know if there's any questions you want answering i know we have been talking about rhinoxes in youtube so there's a question there saying will rhinox uh, give you some extra magnification and it will do i don't use mine that often enough on my channel to be honest with you i really need to start using it more right so like i said i'm gonna wait a few minutes just let everyone in so, um, who noticed the uh, the spiders on the countdown screen? Did anyone notice that? Believe me, that took me way too long to produce, that did. I wanted to spider wrangle spiders across a green screen in order to superimpose it onto the uh, the intro. It was an absolute nightmare, but it turned out okay in the end. Okay, let's have a look now. Everything coming through okay? You can all hear me okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay right i'm just gonna let uh, the guys let Laura know that my youtube screen keeps freezing so um if you get any important questions ping them through on messenger okay because i don't think that's catching up anyway so let's get started with a subject that is very very close to my heart okay and that is jumping spiders so anyone who knows who I am will know that I photograph a lot of jumping spiders, okay? So that's what tonight's gonna to be about. But it's not gonna be about just photographing jump spiders. I'm also gonna talk about uh, caring for a jumping spider. You have one as a pet and uh, where you can get them from. Okay, so let's go over to the presentation now. All right, so first of all, I am Stuart Wood. I am a macro photographer and YouTube creator. You can find me at stuartwood.com. You'll find all the links that you need to find me on that website. So before we get going, I want to show you an exclusive discount code for the uh, venuslens.net web store. That is MSWMM3. This gives you 5% discount on your basket for one week from now for the first 20 customers but it only applies to www.venuslenses.net okay so if you are interested in any of their lenses tonight's the time to go and buy one from their web store i can highly recommend the 100 millimeter uh, macro lens that's the two times macro lens i think that's a fantastic lens anyone who's seen my review will know that that lens is absolutely stunning okay now first of all we're going to just have a quick look at jumping spiders and uh, I, I just think jumping spiders are a great subject to photograph for macro photographers and they're like the clowns of the spider world they are absolutely fantastic so let me just come back to this one this is a pet jumping spider of mine okay this is a young i believe it was an l4 size at the time but we're not going to talk just about pet jumping spiders. We're also going to talk about wild jumping spiders. This is a wild male zebra jumping spider. And I will be going through how I captured that image as well. So first of all, I want to show you where it started. Okay. So I was outside with my camera. And we have this uh, white wall. And there's a little zebra spider crawling up the wall as he does, minding his own business. And the next thing you know, he's got Mowgli Mug with a camera stuck right in his face taking pictures. And this is the result of that picture. So this was shot on the EOS 650D using the EF 24-105mm to lens. Now I'll put that on extension tubes. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I edited it poorly as you can see <laughs> okay and um the reason i want to show you this picture is this is the because it's the first picture i ever took 
of the jumping spider. Now, when I flick back over to it, I want you to pay attention to the actual image. So, uh, the, you know, the eyes are out of focus. It's poorly edited. We've got lots of flaring, which you don't get with lower lenses, by the way. Um, uh, chromatic aberration. We can see it. it it's, it's old. But I thought it was the best spider image I'd ever taken. And in theory, it was, because it was my first one. <laughs> okay. And I post it online onto um, Facebook and onto, I, I believe I posted it on 500px at the time, okay. And it wasn't until I spotted images like this, I realised just how not good that image was. So then I made it, a, um, an ambition of mine was to learn everything I could about macro photography so I could take an image like this, okay. This is a female Phytopeus regis jumping spider. This is a pet jumping spider. This was taken on my Canon EOS R with a Tokina 28mm reversed lens. And it's a about a four year period between the first picture and the second picture. So let me come back here before we go any, any further, okay? So I'm, I'm out on the World Wide Web and I'm seeing pictures like what you've just seen there. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what's so bad about mine and compared to that image? And I had to basically reverse engineer other people's images to find out what type of camera were they using, what lenses were they using, what flashes, what diffusers. And you'll be surprised when you actually ask a photographer, they will tell you what equipment they have used. Now, in the UK, we have what's known as a, a zebra jumping spider, a very common spider, very small, very small, very skittish, and it proved very hard to photograph this spider, particularly to practice macro photography. So I did a little bit of research, and what I found out very quickly was that um, a jumping spider as a pet is actually a thing, <laughs> believe it or not. You can actually... Um, Go online and buy yourself a jumping spider like you would do with a tarantula or anything else uh, pet related like that. Which is, uh, you know, it, 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 it baffled me. It really did baffle me. So I went and I bought myself a jumping spider. So uh, for the folks in the UK, um, anyone who knows me will know this website. This is spoodernest.com. This is where I get all my jumping spiders from. They are um, the captive bred. So what that means is, is that um, captive bred are bred, as it says, in captivity. Okay. Now a lot of websites will sell wild caught spiders, and the problem with them is they could be old, hence why they've been caught because they're too slow to run away, and they could also be carrying eggs. So when you, you know, if you are going to look at going down this route to learn how to photograph jumping spiders, make sure they are captive bred spiders. Okay. Um, so yeah, so you got spoodernest.com, and on there you've also got a jumping spider care sheet. And you go on there, that will teach you exactly how to look after a jumping spider. So what I, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> so what I did is, bear with me, is I went out and I bought some jumping spiders. So the jumping spiders, they're easy to look after. These are the containers for young spiders. And you can see up the top just here where they nest. You can see one just there. Okay. And larger spiders go into larger tubs. Now, if you are interested in um, knowing more about the cages, the enclosures for keeping jumper spiders, there is a video on my YouTube channel. Um, so just go on to there and uh, have a look. Okay. Now let's get on to uh, Bungie. Bungie, this is Bungie, he's a male Phytopus Regis jumping spider and he was the very first one I got and I used him to practice my jumping spider, uh, my jumping spider, my uh, macro photography. Because for me a jumping spider is a perfect subject to practice your macro photography because you've got a small subject so you can practice your magnification, your, magnification, your, um, you know, your photography techniques and also, with their eyes, you get to practice your lighting, you know, diffusing your lighting and that. A jumping spider has everything you need because 
if you can get the reflections right on a jumper spider's eyes, you know your reflections and your specular highlights are going to be okay on beetle shells. So this is the very first picture I took of Bungie. This is on the Canon EOS 650D. We're going back several years now. This was on a 50mm f1.8 lens on extension tubes. And it's not the perfect image. In fact, this is actually a, a low res image that I've had to upscale because uh, unfortunately I've lost the high res uh, image. I missed the focusing point on the eyes, but I do love the image. And I am going to be redoing this image on my YouTube channel in the future. Now here's the setup that we used for that. We have a dandelion clock, which is placed on a wire to stop it drooping. And the colored black ground is actually my monitor that I was using. And it worked out very, very well. In fact, I thought it worked out quite well, just using your monitor as a colored background. Uh, here's my actual setup. We have the Canon 650D with the 50mm on all the extension tubes. I've got 65mm of extension tubes. We have a standard um, flash. Now, this flash was nothing fancy. It's that old, it didn't have an LCD screen on it. It was literally analog. Okay, you don't need the best equipment in the world to start in this type of photography. And on there, I have a basic diffuser. So, we all really need to start. I'm just getting my uh, feed up and running because again, it throws on me. Um, so, yeah, basic equipment, and we were able to get a, what I call a half decent image. Often, you will find that a jumping spider will uh, be that friendly, it will literally jump onto your camera. This is Bungie, he jumped onto my camera lens, so I thought I would take a quick picture. And um, basically, it, at first it's fun, um, but yeah, after quite a while, you start getting the feel for when a jumping spider is going to jump on you because his two front legs will start going like this. And the next thing you know, he's gone and he's on your camera somewhere. And obviously, you don't want to hurt a jumping spider, so you're having to look around on your camera very slowly to try and find out where that jumping spider has jumped. But it is uh, a lot of fun to do. Okay, so here's another example. This is a newer picture. This is with the Canon EOS R and the Tokina again, reversed lens. Fantastic lens for macro photography. However, um, the working distance is about one centimeter. So when you're photographing captive spiders or a subject that is used to you, it's a great lens. But as soon as you go out in the wild or you want to photograph a wild jumper spider, it's, it's just not good enough. Okay, that's where Laura come in handy. <laughs> Okay, here's another one. This is Bungie the third. This is the third uh, male jumper that I had named Bungie. And this one is actually taken with the lower RF 100mm f2.8. Fantastic lens, except I do prefer the auto aperture version. But you know, it, it doesn't matter which one you go with. Okay, so we're going to move on to now some tips for photographing jumper spiders. Whether you have a captive uh, pet jump spider or whether you find a wild jumpy spider is are, are some tips that I'm going to give you to help improve your macro photography Now first of all here's an image that you would typically typically take okay So you find a wild jumpy spider you look down and you take a picture It's not very flattering um, the angle is all wrong the focusing is off and the lighting is awful so Tip number one is to get down to the same level as your subject, whether it's a jump spider or a beetle, whatever, get down to the same level as your subject. Next, you want to focus on the eye. So you can see here we have the focus hitting the far uh, eye, which is its left hand eye. Okay. Okay, and tip number three is to open up your F stop. And to try and get the entire head in shot so if you look on this example here we have the eyes in focus and we have the mandibles in focus as well which is basically the spider's mouth parts and that's what i typically try to aim at is to get the eyes and the mouth in focus if i can't do that then i will focus stack but that's uh, a subject for another live stream which is focus stacking because i could be here for hours talking about focus stacking okay but for now, we'll just stick to single shot uh, images. 
okay so here we have the uh, lighting diffuse so if you look at the lighting here you've got little round specular highlights so we've got the lighting a little bit more diffused okay but also we've introduced a colored background so if you look there we have a horrible gray background which is my bedroom wall and then we have a nice colored background so the background and what i call the um, the scene in a, a macro image is very very important and you're going to see me refer to the uh, the subject that the spider is standing on in the background as the scene okay it's like it's just very important to be honest with you okay so we are setting up the scene so next on this one i have the lights diffused even more as you can see from the specular highlights we boosted the colors and we have a very nice jumping spider image Now, um, so th there's a couple of tips for improving your macro photography. These tips work for all kinds of macro photography. You want to get down low, face the subject, face on, focus on the eyes. It's basically the same principle you would do for portrait photography. And in fact, a lot of my lighting setups are actually uh, reverse engineered from portrait lighting, which is very interesting. I should really do a video on that as well. Okay. So let's move on. Objects to create a scene. Now, like I talked about before, the scene that the spider is on is very important. So a lot of time I favor using Jabroa daisies because they also double up for water drop photography, which is what I did in my previous lower live stream. So here are some examples of some objects I will use with uh, jumping spiders. These are dried out leaves. We have a dried out Jabroa daisy. I want you to take note of the dried Jabroa daisy because that's going to prop up later on in the stream. We also have a tangerine that's dried out and a cone. So these are literally just leaves that are found in the garden that are dried out. And I think they're fantastic as a scene for macro photography. You can place this into a specimen holder like this okay and then once it's placed in there you can just put your subject on there and your subject will typically run around on this leaf for a couple of minutes before it gets bored and jumps off if you have a jumping spider that jumps straight off then there's a good chance you won't be photographing him today this is my um, well-worn tangerine <laughs> okay and all I did was just got the tangerine and just left it out on the desk just for it to dry up. And uh, it creates this nice texture, different colours and shades, which is, you know, I think it's fantastic for, um, as a, basically a stage for your uh, subject. So, again, the last part is, it's going to be a shameless plump, but uh, background cards. Now, uh, I do sell my own texture background cards from my website at stuartwood.com. Shameless punt again. Um, they are downloadable textures that you print out yourself. But without the background card, you're not going to get that nice background. It's just going to be an ugly wall or an ugly fence or something like that. Now, if you're lucky and find a wild jumping spider that is, you know, in the perfect scene, then that is great and go ahead with that but if you can't get a perfect scene it's always handy to have some background cards so here is a typical setup i would use for a jumping spider we have a jabara daisy we have my background cards and i will just let the jumper onto the flower the jumper will spend a couple of minutes exploring the flower and that is your chance to grab a nice photo of your jumping spider so here we have uh, another female Fidipeus Regis jumping spider. This is with the Canon EOS R and the Laura RF 100mm lens. Now just to note, in case anyone hasn't watched my videos, with the 2 times macro lens from Laura, on a full frame camera, you don't need to crop in on a large jumping spider. The, uh, the wild ones in the UK are different because they're very small, but typical large jumper you don't need to crop in you don't need any extension tubes fantastic uh, lens for that if you've got a one times uh, lens i like the canon 100 millimeter i'm going to see with me at the moment 
Um, if you stick on some extension tubes or the Rhinox onto that lens, you can get to almost two times, okay? Right then. So here is a young um, Philippus Regis jumping spider. This is taken with the Canon MPE 65mm lens. And they're just really inquisitive uh, creatures, jumping spiders are. They will let you basically play around from so long as they don't feel threatened you're okay here is the same spider again but note the background okay can you see how the background's like it's a different color it's a little bit boring whereas here we have the background wrapped around like it's a seamless background and it suits the scene just that little bit better okay so what about the lighting and you know how do we go about diffusing the lighting for macro photography now this is going to be uh, a subject that is um, it, it's not necessarily for me to tell you how to do it correctly it's what you prefer some people prefer a speed light on top of the camera other people for twin macro flashes and it is subjective because it's like art it's subjective okay so i'm just going to give you some of my methods that i use for doing jumping spiders now, first of all is this setup we have the Canon EOS R with the 100mm macro lens and we have a bare flash on the top of the camera. This gives us this result which is not very pleasing at all. And uh, note the floor that the spider is on, that is the tangerine, okay. But if you look at the spider's eyes we've got a very, very nasty hot spot and the lighting is very, very harsh. Okay. Um, so let me just get on to here there we go so next you want to diffuse it this is a very simple diffuse it probably doesn't even cost one pound it actually came with the flash okay but i just wanted to show you the what you're trying to aim here is to get the light from the flash to the front of the lens that is the goal you want the light to the front of the lens and you want it diffused that creates this one now unfortunately I missed my focusing point on this one but it serves okay to show you the um, you know the results so you got a little bit of a highlight um, on the eyes and the lighting is diffused just a little bit now what I want to do now is I want to show you this one this is the one I am currently using for all my macro photography I'm currently using the uh, the front part here which is the bonnet but you put that onto your lens and that will create this type of lighting now just look at those beautiful eyes it gives character to the spider the lighting is soft and it's very very pleasing so um yeah diffusion is probably the most important part when it comes to photographing jumping spiders you want that diffused look but at the same time this bonnet um, diffuser also gives a nice reflection in the spider's eyes which is why I love it so much okay so my setup I currently use the young Nuo twin macro flash and that is the setup I'm currently using I've put on some like little arms that extend the flash heads further out from where it would be on a standard setup that's the result from this very very ugly again you've got harsh highlights um i mean you can see the two spots from the um, the flash heads and it's very very harsh so again we get the crafty bells diffuser okay so if you type in crafty bells in google you will find their diffusers get the crafty bells diffuser pop it on the front of my uh, rig which let me just go back and show you this part here I have some uh, step up and step down rings of glued to the front of the adapter that enables this um, this diffuser to fit on and then we get a nice image like this now this is again with the OSR lower EF 100 millimeter and we have a nice diffused light but at the same time I'm able to pair with the heads independently to make it look like there's more light coming from the left hand side than there is on the right to create some nice shadow and depth okay so here's another example this one is taken with the Canon 100 millimeter with the Rhinox so anyone who's interested in the Rhinox DCR 250 this is the type of magnification you're going to get out of a full frame camera 
going to be roughly around two times macro. And here is a, another, this is a Bungie the third on a Canon EOS R, now a 100mm two times macro lens. And again, you can see the reflection in the eyes, it just looks gorgeous. Okay, so before we go on to talking about photographing wild jumping spiders, do we have any um, questions that need to be answered? Uh, Paul, is the Rhinox worth adding to a Canon 2.8 100mm macro? I've just showed you an image with the Rhinox. It does help you fill out your frame just a little bit better. And the price of the Rhinox, I'd say it's, it's worth giving it a go. Okay, do we have any more questions? No, okay, I will continue. Okay. Don't forget guys, you can always send me questions, okay, and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, so we've learned from that uh, you know, you can go out, you can get yourself a pet jumping spider to practice with. And believe me, guys, it becomes addictive because I did have start out with one. Now I've got like uh, nine. <laughs> okay. It, it gets addictive. It's, it's, it's like it's a whole new world when you start keeping jumping spiders. And every single one has its own personality. But we have pet jumping spiders so that we can practice... Uh, not just doing our setup, but you know, practice with our setup, practice with our lighting, and practice diffusing our lighting so that we can do the same with wild jumping spiders. So, here is a uh, wild, uh, this is a, a common sun jumper. This is taken with the EOS R and the Lauer EF 100mm macro lens. And this is taken in exactly the same way as your pet ones are. I've put the spider onto a scene with a background card and that scene there is actually the uh, the dried up Jabroa daisy that I mentioned earlier in the stream so when I said keep an eye on it this is the type of image that you're going to get from that dried up Jabroa daisy and of course I have a yellow background card in the background the, the, the scene and the background seems like it's seamless and I do like the seamless background it's fantastic I really do like it Here's the same jumping spider again, but this time I went into a portrait orientation. And if you notice, the lighting is still coming from above. And that is one of the benefits of having the twin macro flash, because I can turn my camera onto portrait mode, which is like this, but I can twist the heads so the lighting is still coming down from above, which is one of the reasons I still use the twin macro flash. Okay, so again, here's another wild jumper. This is a male zebra jumping spider. This is taken with the Canon ESR and the uh, Canon MPE 65mm lens. And this was done slightly different. So this spider, he was running around, and all I did is I had the leaf, which is basically the same as this. It's not the same leaf, but it's basically the same. And all I did was put the leaf on the ground in front of the spider, the spider climbs up onto the leaf and I'll just bang, 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 take a couple of pictures and I managed to get that shot there, which I was very, very happy with. Okay, um, have you ever used a studio lamp to take macro shots? Yes, I have. I've actually got a video on my YouTube channel where I use a massive studio light to do macro photography. If it's, uh, you can do it. It's a bit bulky, but you can do it. Okay. Now next, we have another, it's, this is a female jumping spider. Okay, and this was a very, very small jumping spider. In fact, if I remember right, the flower it's on is only a couple of millimeters in size. This is with the Canon ESR and the Canon 100 millimeter. I believe I had to crop in a hell of a lot <laughs> to get that image because it was so small. So here is a male zebra jumping spider and this jumping spider is on a piece of grass that I have then wet with a spray bottle 
and to my surprise he actually picked up one of the water drops and started uh, drinking from it while he was sitting there so I was able to get the shot now this again is with the Rhinox I haven't marked it on there for some reason but I can tell it's the Rhinox because of the reflection in the eyes so again that's a 100 millimeter lens with the Rhinox on it, it the Rhinox does do a very very good job at uh, extending your magnification okay so I want to talk to you now about how you can get an easy jumping spider shot out in the wild so no studio lights um, you can use your flash and diffuser if you want to but I'm going to show you a method that you can do this with out in the world without any flash okay so what you're going to do here let me come back here is you're going to pick up your camera with your lower lens okay and you want to set up your camera into high speed continuous shooting okay point it to the sky and then you want to expose for the blue sky okay and that's what you're seeing here I've exposed for the sky next you want to pick up a leaf bring it into your frame and focus on the leaf and again take a picture okay so what you have there is you have your camera set in high speed burst mode you've got a leaf and you've got a blue sky so all you're going to do then is you're going to get your jumping spider to come onto the leaf and the bigger the leaf the easier this is because he feels less scared if he's got plenty of room to run around and when you pick up the jumping spider onto the leaf if he instantly jumps off the leaf then that means he's not wanting to play and just leave him alone to get on with his daily life but if the spider sits on the leaf you've got a good one to play with okay so all you're going to do then is you're going to focus okay you got your camera pointing up to the sky you have your scene you got your spider and you're just going to press the button on your camera again you're in high speed burst i was in high speed burst <laughs> Hold on a minute, guys. There we go. Select high speed burst. Okay. And that's all you're going to do. And the higher the frame rate you have on your camera, the more success you're going to get at getting a shot like this. So, with that, you're going to get a bunch of images like this. And I can guarantee you right now, nearly all of those shots will be out of focus nearly all of them will be out of focus okay but you will get the one that is in focus now unfortunately this is a low res file that again I've had to upscale because for some reason I couldn't find the high res file but this is taken on the 80D with the 100mm macro cropped in of course and um, if you're lucky you'll get a jumping spider like this one then this was taken with the trim macro flash and the diffuser and the spider loved just exploring the leaf and it allowed me to get a couple of shots before it scurried off out into the wild and these shots are actually taken from my latest macro adventure so if you're interested in that you can check out my youtube channel for that video and quite often you will find that the jumpy spider will be very interested in what you're doing what i have noticed as well which i need to do a little bit more research in is quite often enough 50 percent of the time um the trim macro flash has light uh, focusing led so when you half press your shutter these little leds turn on and what i have noticed is a couple of times the spider actually turns around to look at what the light is um you know it's it's very interesting that you know they notice you they turn around and as it's just been mentioned in the uh, chat they are very inquisitive okay I'm going to answer questions at the end because my chat's not scrolling okay so I'll have to scroll back okay so keep your questions coming I will answer them at the end okay all right so one very important thing to do when you're out in the bed particularly if you are photographing wild jumping spiders don't forget to ID the spider now when i'm out and about and i grab an image like this now this has been processed in lightroom 
it's hard for you to ID what the spider is. So what I will typically do is at the same time, I will take a top shot of the spider and a side shot of the spider. Okay. And all you got to do is you got to type in, because we know what type of spider it is, it's a jumping spider. Okay. So all you got to do is type in jumping spider of your location. So if you're in America, type in America. If you're in Australia, type in Australia. Okay. And quite often in Google, you will find a ton of images uh, a ton of information on websites so you can ID a spider. And from those images, I was able to ID that this is a common sun jumping spider. So again, getting um, your above view and the side view of a jumping spider is very important, particularly if you're in the UK, because the amount of spiders that look like a common jumping spider, but they're not, is unbelievable. And you can only tell what spider it is from the patterns on the side and from on top of the spider. Okay, so we've got a question from Paul. Does the lower does the lower have any lenses with an RF mount? They sure do. I have one here. This is the lower 100 millimeter RF mount lens. It's a fully manual lens. Okay, so there's no connections here. But uh, I've used this on my Canon EOS R and it works flawlessly. So yes, they do make an RF. Okay. Right then, so what happens if you suffer from arachnophobia okay now i'm going to tell you something now that my subscribers already know this but if you've uh, if you're new to me um i actually suffered from arachnophobia <laughs> okay i suffered from arachnophobia when i brought my first jumping spider and what i found was because if you don't hold your jumping spider, it doesn't get used to you. So when you try and photograph it, it's jumping all over the place. It wants to get away from you. You've got this big, ugly monster that's trying to hurt it. So you have to handle them every other day to get them used to you. And people can actually see on the channel the, the difference that it makes as time goes on, how mellow and settled down the spiders get. But in order to do that, I have to get over my fear of jumping spiders. Well, spiders in general, I should say. And the jumping spider helped me do that. So one day I had my friend Kirsty, who, you know, she's not too keen on spiders. So she held uh, Bungie. So that is Bungie right there. Perfect size for a full frame camera on a two times uh, macro lens from Laura. But she came up with an idea of a photo shoot involving spiders. So I said, you know, we'll, we'll stick stick bungee on your nose just see how it gets on it was fine but um unfortunately the jumping spiders were too small for the shoot now the, this image is one of the resulting images now this isn't a jumping spider this is a tarantula but because of a jumping spider she was able to get over a phobia of spiders and allow a tarantula to crawl up her naked back and that is one big feat. And we did an entire photo shoot with uh, a tarantula on this model. And it was crawling all over. And it was a fantastic day. And uh, the images, they were great. So, yeah, if you suffer from arachnophobia and you want to get help in getting over it, I would suggest you get a jumping spider because they're just... I don't know, I think it's the large eyes on the front of them. Just they don't make them look like they're, you know, the nasty spiders. They've got character and they interact with you and it can help you get over arachnophobia. So uh, Nettie says she had a phobia of spiders, but my videos and images have helped me not be so scared. Exactly. Um, yeah, they, they are great for getting over arachnophobia. Like I said, I suffered from arachnophobia, uh, but no, I don't. Except I won't hold my big tarantula because that one's just vicious. So jumping spiders are friendly. Um, you can handle your jumping spider. Okay, now you're not going to be able to handle a wild jumping spider as easily, unfortunately, because you know, um, they're not used to you. They're going to run around. But it's good practice for handling wild jumping spiders if you wish to. Okay. Um, when it comes to the wild ones, you don't have to handle them. You don't even have to move them because in some cases they're in a perfect spot for you to photograph them. But sometimes it's necessary just to put a background card in or something. And while you're doing that, 
you know, you're having to just control where the spider goes. So it does help if you have some practice with that. So again, jump spiders are very friendly. So this is my latest jumpy spider that I got and he's very skittish. And uh, here is a female Philip of Regis, again, sitting on my finger and they will just sit there quite happily. So what do you do if you have a jumping spider that um, that is very skittish? You know, it's running around all our place. It won't sit still. Wild ones won't sit still very often for you. And some pet ones won't. Well, what you got to do is uh, ask yourself, how do you keep a man still for, for any length of point? I mean, apart from putting on the football or any kind of racing, you've got to feed him. Okay, now when a man, when he's feeding, he ain't moving. So it's the same thing with a jumpy spider. If you give a jumpy spider some prey, that jumpy spider is going to sit there for the next hour eating that food. And you'll be surprised how much prodding it will take from you before it thinks, I've got to get out of here. Okay. So here is that same one that I said I had trouble photographing. All I did was give him a flight. Now, I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of this jumpy spider because I'm going to embarrass myself. But... Once I gave him a, a fly to eat, he just sat there and let me ph photograph him as many times as he wanted. And then once he got used to me, I was able to do it without a fly. So this is the same spider again on a leaf. And I was able to get the shot I needed without giving him a fly because he'd gotten used to me. Here is another new jump spider I have. I haven't featured these spiders on my YouTube channel yet, but they will get featured. And again, this one was very skittish. So again, I gave him a fly and then he was just sitting there quite happily having his dinner, letting me photograph him. Again, this is with the lower EF 100mm lens. He's the same spider again. Now that he's gotten used to me, I was able to place him onto a Jabroa Daisy and photograph him very easily. So the Jabroa daisies, I think these are fantastic subjects for macro photography. Uh, not only for jumping spiders, but for water drops and all kinds of things like that, because you can put your subject right in the middle. And because the petals are raised up, you've got a nice background that you don't need to use a background card. They're fantastic for it. Again, Sometimes I dry out the Jabroa Daisy for my macro shoots and it's just the type of style I'm doing at the moment. It's like a dark and moody style. So let's get closer. Let's talk about extreme macro photography. Okay, now I need just to point out that I'm not very good at this type of photography. Okay, my setup is not the best because it's got a lot of vibrations, but this is... Uh, summit you can go down if you want to and that is you get magnif you get microscope lenses and attach them to your camera so in this example here this is a 10 times um, excuse me so this is a 10 times Microsoft objective you're probably talking 100 and something odd frames that are photo stacked to uh, focus stacked together again I'm not the best at this, but I do want to mention it on this live stream that you can do this. Uh, I'm not on the right one. There you go. So here is the um, that one I was just talking about. 10 times microscope objective. And my aim here was to try and take a photograph of the spider's eyes. And it kind of works, but again, I've got a lot of vibration on uh, my setup currently. But like I said, I want to mention the fact that you, know, you can do this. Now, the spiders need to be dead for this to work. These spiders died of natural causes. They are my pet spiders. Again, uh, spiders only live for a couple of years. Even if you look after them very, very well, they will just drop dead on you eventually. Here is a female one that I focus stacked about uh, 150 shots. Again, extreme macro photography. Okay. So here's another example. We have, um, I believe it's some, it's a flower. I believe that's a uh, Jabroa daisy with another Jabroa daisy in the background. So if I just show you this now. 
So all I did on this was I have one Jabara Daisy just there. I then placed the other Jabara Daisy in the background like that. And then put the jumping spider in the middle of the first flower. And that gives us this image here, which worked out very, very well. Again, this is with my EOS R with the lower EF 100mm lens. And we have that diffuser on the front of that lens. And this is the one from the beginning of the uh, live stream and uh, basically it's exactly the same setup we have a, uh, a scene in this case it's a leaf we have the background and I like again I like to make my background seamless uh, this one is taken with a token reversed lens again great lens to get started with macro photography but the working distance is an absolute pain um, like I said, if you want to photograph wild jumping spiders, then uh, working distance is going to be very, very important because they don't like you getting too close. This is another uh, young regal jumping spider. This is taken on my Canon 650D. And the scene that he is on is actually broccoli. Um, Okay, okay. Am I coming through okay? Because Alan says he can't hear me. Okay. Is everything coming through okay, guys? Just let me know quickly if everything's okay because someone says they can't hear my voice. okay it's okay okay well i'll continue then anyway the scene for this particular photo was broccoli and a blue background card that's it okay very very simple because because you're in macro and you're in that close people can't tell what it is so yeah this again broccoli and a blue background card that is it put the spider on Again, let the spider have a little look around and sometimes the spider will stop to either wipe its eyes or um, have a wash and that's your time to hit that shutter button. So here is uh, a female Fittipeus Regis jumping spider and it's on some kind of stem, I can't quite remember what stem it was but again, just a blue background card and that worked out very well. So another thing you can do, now I, I uh, talked about this in my water drop one where we use a mobile phone to create a mirror effect. And I did the same with my jumping spider. So in this example, we have the spider on an iPad, which is giving this mirror effect. And I thought it turned out very, very well. <clears throat> Here's another example. Again, with the ESR and the lower EF 100mm macro lens. I absolutely love that lens. <laughs> it's great. Except for the river ceiling. Fix it. Okay. <laughs> right. So here we have an example of bungee. Oh, is that Buster? I think it's Buster, actually. In a, um, a calla lily. And I went black and white on this one. I thought that uh, going black and white on this particular one was a great idea because the calla lily itself was white the background was white and the spider is black and white so i figured let's just go all black and white so the last image i have here is a surprise because i only found it yesterday in my archive and i completely forgot that i took this image so what we have here is a jumping spider silhouette image taken on the canon EOS 80D with the Canon EF 100mm lens. I'm going to be redoing these shoots this year, hopefully, and I might do a video about it just to show how it was done. But literally, I had my spider on a uh, stick, and then I placed the stick in between the camera and the sun, and I managed to grab this shot right there, which I thought was fantastic. Brilliant. And one last shot of my new jumping spider again. I've just got some dried up purple flowers, put the spider on there, put a background card in there, and away we go. Literally perfect. You, you can't go wrong with it. And again, 
you can do this in the wild like I've shown you can either take out a background card with you to photograph or you can just point your camera up at the sky to get a blue background I believe that's how Thomas Shahan does his he points it up to the sky and just takes a shot of the sky it gives you a nice blue background and helps the spider to stand out in your images okay so again I would like to point out that there is an exclusive discount code for one week at venuslenses.net again the first 20 customers that use it will receive a 5% discount I would suggest that you go and buy yourself a 100mm 2 times macro lens absolutely fantastic lens apart from the front element just to get lower to uh, weather seal this lens and that will be the go to lens for any macro photographer in my opinion okay so do we have any questions coming in um just to let you know that my facebook feed has frozen okay so everything's working at the moment let me have a look for questions uh, la, 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 la. do you also use a flashlight to light yeah um no i don't use a flashlight to light my scenes because the flashlight power is not uh, good enough the jumping spiders are always moving so i use flash because it's actually the flash duration that freezes the scene not your shutter speed so typically i'll use anything from 160 to 1 200 for a second on my shutter speed and then the flash will freeze the spider in place for um for you to use a flashlight the the, the spider's literally got to stay still for quite a long time uh let's have a look So I don't think we have much. Okay, how to take top shots? Okay, Joel, uh, how to take a top shot where both the head and the abdomen are in focus? You literally you've got to get the spider flat onto your focus plane. Okay, so if you're coming down onto the spider, you need to be perfectly in line with the spider so that the spider's um, head and abdomen are in the same focusing plane okay then you gotta remember when you're doing an id shot it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be you know the best shot in the world you just need a shot to grab you know what the spider's texture and patterns look like so you can id them. that's all you really need to do uh, da, 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 da. any more uh talking through okay da, da, da. I'm just going to check uh, YouTube, guys, okay? Uh, okay, we've got questions for Laura. I can't answer those questions, unfortunately. Um, the Laura 100mm, which is this lens here, is uh, $450, okay? Um, well, have I lost any spies while shooting them? No. I haven't. Uh, if you've got a very uh, skitty spider, what you can do is put down a white towel so that if your jumpy spider jumps off, you can easily see where it goes. And my desk is actually sealed all the way around because I knew I'd be photographing jumping spiders, so I sealed it all the way around the wall to make sure there's no gaps that the spider can run into. But um, I'll be honest with you, there's all, I've hardly had any that actually run away, they mostly just sit around. Uh, tips to obtain a better manual focus are you talking about focusing on your subject is that, is that what you're talking about um, if you're talking about focusing on your subject uh, I am going to be doing a video about um, focusing for macro so if you have a DSLR uh, you can set up your middle focusing point uh, to flash red and beep when it's in focus that's one tip I can give you so when you half press your shutter beat button you move in and out and you you yeah you put that focusing point on the spider's eyes and it will flash red and beep when it's uh, in focus 
if you're lucky enough to have a mirrorless camera, which I can't show you because it's currently filming, you'll have access to focus peaking. And focus peaking is absolutely fantastic for macro photography. And I am going to be doing a video for that coming up shortly. Um, we've got a lot of questions coming in for Laura that I can't answer, unfortunately. Um, are you going to be rever sealing this? Uh, I believe Laura will possibly look into rever sealing if they can get the engineers to look at that. Okay, uh, I haven't tried the two times to five times yet. They are going to be sending me one in a couple of months. Okay, so I will be having that on my channel. Okay. Right, how long average between molts? Um, I find it it varies from spiders to spiders. To be honest with you, I think it's all depends on how much you feed them. Okay, so if you feed them a lot, they'll molt a lot quicker. I believe. Don't don't hold me to that. Okay, but generally mine will molt every month or couple of months. I feed my spiders every two days. I miss them every two days. Again, I've got a video on my YouTube channel. Because we can talk for an hour just about jumping spider um, care. Okay. But, um, yeah. And you'll know when a jumping spider's molting because it'll make a little hammock up the top of its enclosure and it'll go in there and it won't come out to feed, it won't come out to drink. And when it does that, you just don't disturb them, leave them be, and uh, eventually they'll molt. You'll see their old skin and they'll kick it out the hammock. And that's when you're ready to go for a um, you know a photography session. Another tip I can give you with your pet jumper spiders is never try and photograph them on feeding day because they've got one track mind and that's food. All the one is food. Generally, I will feed my jumper spider and then I will photograph them the day afterwards. Okay. Right. Any more questions? My Facebook is frozen. Okay, my Facebook is frozen, guys. So, my potato machine, I don't think it can handle it. <laughs> okay. A nice excuse to buy a new computer, I think. Um, yeah, if you think it's about to molt, Les, then don't touch it, okay? Because just leave it alone. Because if you disturb a jumping spider while it's molting, then you can, um, you know, it can actually die from it. Okay, Windhelm, where do you find jumping spiders when you're not in your garden? Uh, again, you've got either wild jumping spiders or pet jumping spiders. Check the internet for your local area for breeders that sell jumping spiders if you want to get a pet jumping spider wild jumping spiders i always find them on garden fences or your wall of your house there are certain species of jumping spiders that are for certain areas as well like you've got a, a marsh one which i'm hoping to be able uh, um which i'm hoping to be able to photograph if i ever do find one uh, but for that i have to go out the house to do that <laughs> in the current you know, what's going on at the moment, uh, it hasn't really been feasible to do that. Okay. Uh, what do I think of your result of getting two millimeters of ruler on it? That's on an M50? That's, that, that's some magnification right there, you know what I mean? Two millimeters of a ruler on an M50. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, if, uh, if you want to work out uh, what your setup's magnification is doing just photograph the millimeters on a ruler okay and then um you take that number and you divide the sensors millimeters in width you'll find out what your magnification is again i've got a i've got a video for that on my youtube channel okay so let's have a look what time it is okay it's almost nine o'clock uh have we have any more questions Okay, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to go back over here, I'm just going to plug the next live stream from Laura. Uh, again, my name is Stuart Wood. Uh, you can find me at stuartwood.com. Okay, I'm going to get back to answering some more questions in a minute, but if anyone hasn't got answer, uh, a question, then um, you're free to go if you wish to, but I will be answering some questions. 
So um, next week's live stream is the Laura collection to all the lenses I've loved before by Michael Riddell. Now me and Michael are friends, so I'm going to be looking forward to this. This is going out at eight o'clock Sweden time, which is two in the afternoon in the US. And again, that is next Friday. So I will be uh, most likely in the chat uh, bugging Michael. I might ask him some awkward questions. <laughs> okay. Right, so uh, Giles' question I've answered. Um, yeah. Okay. Very disappointed that my Facebook feed froze. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what's going on there. But room for improvement. Okay, so I'm going to hang around, guys, for any questions. Uh, macro photography or jumping spiders in general um, let's see if I can get one out for you come here Bungie oh, Bungie is mellow is mellow okay come on then come on fella so there's Bungie you're not going to be able to see him because this camera's not going to focus on him I don't think come on there you go See, there's, Bun there's Bungie, say hello. You know, you know I had to get one out before the, uh, the stream ended, didn't you? Come on, focus. Okay, you're not going to focus, are you? There you go. So, there's Bungie. He likes to come out and have a little bit of a play, he does. But, um, yeah. Jump spiders are great. Pets as well. I really do like them. Right, let me just put him away because I can't look at the camera while I'm handling Bungie because it would be dangerous to the jumping spider if I was to concentrate on the camera and not him. Okay. There we go. That's Bungie. <coughs> right, let's have a look. Uh... Yeah, uh, I've done the uh, the manual focus again. If there's anyone out there who's interested in macro photography, you've got an old camera and you're looking to upgrade to a better camera, I would recommend you go mirrorless every single time, okay? Because you can see your exposure in the EVF. You can see your depth of field preview by pressing in a button to see the depth of field preview. You've got focus peaking, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, when when you move your camera in and your spider's eyes highlight in the colour you've selected for focus peaking, you just press the shut button. Bang! Brilliant. So if you are looking, um, uh, you know, if you are looking at upgrading, go mirrorless. Okay. So yeah, again, when you're looking at tips for uh, focusing uh, manually okay you just move your uh, set usually you set your lenses focus first so if you look on the lower lens i can set it to one to one two to one so you set your magnification first okay and then you grab your camera and you just move it back and forwards again you set up your focusing points so they beep and flash at you when you're on the spider's eyes it'll beep it'll flash you can press the button and away you go again if you've got a mirrorless camera then focus peaking is your best friend. Okay. Lee Hall, hello my friend. I've been watching your live streams on both YouTube and Facebook. Do you think it would be better to just concentrate on one? Uh, as Facebook messed up a lot of your live streams, plus you are you're splitting your viewers up and making it hard for the presenter. Unfortunately, that's not my choice. That's up to Laura to decide where they want to go. I personally, I only live stream to YouTube. Uh, I'm not keen on Facebook, I'll be honest with you, because it's it's always messing up. But that's, that's down to Laura to choose where the live stream goes to, okay? All right. <laughs> okay, Barry, all right. I'm going to have to cover the elastic band, aren't I? Okay. Um, this is personal preference. Okay. Now with the lower lens, the uh, the focusing is a little bit tight, and it's uh, a metal ring. Okay. So you can't focus it 
well I can't focus it one handed. Now when I've got my twin macro flash, tell you what, just give me give me two seconds. I'm gonna set up the twin macro flash, okay? Just so I can tell you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay. I'm just going to quickly set this up to show you why I've got an elastic band on my uh, my lower lens. And it's all about um, handheld, okay? So I always, you know, 95% of the time I'm handheld out in the field. I don't like using tripods because they restrict my movement too much. So when you have your camera like this, so we have, uh, this is the 80D with the lower 100mm lens and I have my, um, hopefully you can see this, so I have the adapter for the trim macro flash, okay? So, when I'm out in the field, this can turn, okay? So you can turn it around any way, which way you want and also it's great to hold to steady your camera. So I have my my right hand is on the grip, my left hand is holding the front of the lens like this, okay, that's being pushed into my eye, okay, and what I've got then is I have a thumb to do the focusing, so let's say I've got it set to two to one and I'm moving in and out, but then I find a composition that's nice with um, the foreground, the background and the spider is slightly out of focus. What I can do is with the elastic band is I can just turn it very easily because the elastic band is giving me more grip on the actual lens itself, on the uh, the focusing ring. So then I'm able to just very, very fine tune focusing. And it also works very well for video doing that as well. So the elastic band gives me more grip on the focusing ring on the lower lens to be able to twist it with one finger. Okay. Right, any more questions? If not, I will shoot off. Right, let's go and check. I'm just going to check uh, YouTube. Um, let's have a look. We're talking about adapting the... Um, the glass to Sony's because uh, Sony's don't have the automatic aperture. I've heard some good points and some bad points about adapting the lens, uh, Canon lenses to Sony's. I think it all depends on the quality of the adapter. Okay. Okay, how long have we had Bungie? I've only had Bungie a couple of months um, now, Donny. That is Bungie the third, okay. Again, jump spiders that don't live very long. So uh, one piece of advice I would give you is don't get attached to your jumping spiders, okay? Because uh, my original Bungie, I got really attached to him. I was taking all pictures, and then one day I woke up and he was just dead. So yeah, don't get attached to your jumping spider, okay? Uh, any plans to get a focusing rail? I actually have a, a motorized focusing rail, but again. My current setup is not brilliant for it. I might try and stabilize it for future videos, but at the moment I'm concentrating on handheld stuff. Okay. Okay, so it is an interesting one from, uh, is it Pipe Pipe Pipe? I'll, I'll butcher your name. Anyway. Uh, they're asking, do you know where you can buy dead spiders to take pictures on uh, a macro rail? So, um, I don't know the website off by heart, but if you search for dead insects on places like eBay and Google, you will find people that specialise in dead insects. Um, another place you can go, I mean, I don't know where you live, okay, but in the UK we have a lot of entomology shows where... You can go along and you can see and buy dead insects. Now, obviously, at the moment, they're not going ahead. But when all of you know the current situation calms down, you can go to a show. And from there, you can buy 
things like bullet ants and stuff like that they can use for your uh, extreme macro photography. So yeah, um, probably I'd start with eBay first. If not, have a look on Google. Okay then, so I believe that is everything. I'm just going to double check to make sure there's no uh, questions because again, my Facebook's frozen up. So uh, when am I doing my live walk around the garden? I don't know. Um, maybe a couple of weeks. I'll see. Okay, so I can't see any more questions. Okay, again, we just come back here. Again, you can find me at stuartwood.com. There's links to my social media on that website. So if you do have any follow up questions or you're not watching this live, then you can always contact me on there if you have any questions. Okay, again. Again, next week we have Michael Riddell. Um, he's, he's talking about his Laura collection, so that's going to be an interesting one. So do please pop along and help support Michael and Laura on that live stream. All right, there you go. I've got the right, I've got the right screen this time. So yeah, uh, Michael Riddell again is on next week. So again, pop along and uh, see if you can. Uh, ask him any questions about his Laura collection. So I'm going to leave it there. Again, I would like to thank Laura for having me along. Hopefully, they will ask me again to do something similar in the future. I have ideas. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want to thank all of you for watching, coming along, liking, and asking questions. Again, my name is Stuart Wood, and again, I will see you on the next.